Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Wan, and for my literature review for ECEC 572, my topic is energy efficient circuit design, and I will be specifically focusing on full adders and various other arithmetic units. So just a quick overview of what we'll be talking about today. Uh, first, I'm just going to be going over a short introduction on full adders and their standard structures. And then we're going to be talking about where possible uh, optimizations may lie. Uh, first, in the logic structure or the general flow of how the adder works. And then in the logic style, uh, which generally consists of changing what the adder is consisted of. And then we'll talk about various implementations uh, from different papers regarding this topic, and finally some conclusions after we've gone through all the implementations. Uh, so first, again, we're just going to start with a small introduction on the full adder. Right. Uh, so the background on why I chose to focus on full adders is when looking at generally increasing the efficiency of a system, uh, one small piece that you can increase the efficiency of in terms of power and speed and have an overall increase is the full adder. Uh, it's a versatile and a common component and it's used in various locations. So uh, if you want to optimize any of those, you can start with the full adder itself. Uh, any multi-bit adder such as serial, either serial or parallel, um, you know, they, they all utilize the full adder as well as carry out multiplication and of course in the processor uh, you know there's a lot of usage of the adder there with the ALU uh, any floating point or any address generation all requires the full adder so optimization in terms of both speed and power for the full adder uh, can lead to massive gains for the system so uh, that's why I chose to focus my energy efficient circuit design on specifically the full adder uh, so now here's just a small overview of the full adder uh, you know the basic full adder structure um, is you have two half adders and an OR gate, or if you break that down completely to gates, uh, you know, you have a ZOR gate and an AND gate in each half adder that leads into another ZOR and AND gate, and then you have an OR gate for the carryouts. Um, and on the right side, I just have, you know, the truth table, um, you know, just showing the, the bits for each, but uh, yeah, this is just a general CMOS full adder implementation. And if we look at the next side as well, you know, uh, this is just a general transistor look uh, of the design, right? Um, we have 28 transistors, and on all, there might be like small differences here and there of how it's laid out. But this is what's generally considered the standard, you know, uh, CMOS design. Uh, of course, we're going to talk a lot about this uh, more later as well. But when changing logic styles, a lot of the changes happen here um, in terms of the, in the makeup and what what's used, what technology is used here. Okay. Uh, so first, we're going to talk about logic structures in terms of uh, where we can really improve our system. Right. So again, I pulled up the diagram of the full adder circuit. Right. Um, it, the general logic structure or the logic flow of the classic CMOS full adder is that in your first block, you know, um, that's when you take in your inputs A and B, um, and the output of that is a zoring of A and B, and then your second block takes that output as well as your carry in and calculates your sum. Meanwhile, your third block uh, takes out that output uh, as well as the carry in and as well as the A term and it gets your carry out term. Right? Um, so if you take a closer look at the structure, what you'll realize is both block two and block three uh, rely on having to know what the output of block one or the ZOR of, of A and B are in order to actually move on. Right. Um, so in this logic structure, the overall propagation delay and the power consumption, uh, they basically rely heavily uh, on the, this first block. Right. Uh, this first block has a heavy influence on, on the entire structure. And so while if you might want to keep this uh, structure, then you may think to imp increase the efficiency of this first block. If you were to change the logic structure, you might do so in a way where both block two and block three are reliant on block one. And below, uh, you know, the classic three block structure of the full adder, um, you know, we'll talk about this alternate structure more, but this is just an example of an alternate uh, logic structure and what it might look like. You know, it still has the same inputs and same outputs, but, you know, how it goes about and how it organizes all these inputs and outputs these are, are, are different. Um, so that's what you would do if you want to change a logic structure. Uh, next, we're going to talk about different logic styles. Uh, so when I'm talking about logic styles, uh, generally, uh, this is changes at the gate and transistor level. 
and trying to gain efficiency and speed by modifying these. Of course, you can also adjust the logic structure as well. Um, and some of these will require a change to the logic structure, but uh, you know it's not necessary to adjust the logic structure. And a lot of the early papers we'll be looking at later on the implementations uh, look to change the logic style while maintaining the same logic structure. And so now I'm just going to talk like, a quick, sorry, quickly talk about each of these different logic styles uh, just to give a little introduction in case you're not familiar with these logic styles so that when we talk about the implementations, uh, we're more familiar uh, with what's actually going on in those papers. Um, so the first, again, we're just coming back to our standard CMOS, complement metal oxide semiconductor. Right? And, and since, you know, generally we know what CMOS is like, you know, we see on the right, um, we'll, we'll talk about, you know, what are the advantages and disadvantages that CMOS has over many of these other logic styles. Right, and the advantage is, is number one, it's very easy to implement and it's reliable. Right? And on top of that it has excellent noise margins. So then, you know, if CMOS was perfect, of course, we wouldn't be pursuing other logic styles, but CMOS has its own flaws when it comes to creating smaller circuits. And so if you look at the disadvantages, of course, there's significant area size because you have to size up generally the PMOS transistor to match for the gate. And so you're left with, uh, you know, significant area size and in general you'll find CMOS circuits will have a much larger area than some of these other logic styles as well you know for the same reason we have a high input capacitance uh, for CMOS and generally we have a higher power dissipation now this isn't you know um, this isn't uh, set in stone but you know when we compare bare bones CMOS to bare bones of other styles we do find that CMOS has a higher power dissipation um, so now we'll talk about our first alternate logic style, and that's the complementary pass transistor logic, also known as CPL. Right? So CPL is a pass transistor logic where it utilizes only NMOS transistors. Right? And then the output of the NMOS uh, transistor uh, network is connected to an inverter. Right? Um, so as you can see in our top diagram on the right, uh, this is an example. Uh, we just have you know the NMOS. Uh, uh, in the system that goes out to the inverter, right? And so the advantage of this is because you only have the NMOS uh, per gate instead of instead of both, right? Instead of both the PMOS and NMOS, you have much smaller input capacitances, and you do not need to size uh, the pull up or pull down transistors, right? And because of that inverter at the output of uh, CPL circuits, we have good output drive. Uh, compared to many other logic styles. Uh, however, we do have a s higher static through current. And while you know this looks like it has less transistors uh, and it's an easier layout at a lower level, uh, it actually gets much more difficult generally um, as you increase in the complexity of the circuit designing. You know, it looks relatively simple on less gates right now because of it's just a simple gate. But as you increase the complexity, it, it's harder to implement and uh, relatively inefficient. Uh, maybe not compared to CMOS, but compared to some of the other past transistor, past transistor styles, which we'll talk about right now. So an alternative to the uh, CPL is the double pass transistor logic. Uh, so th this is another usage of the pass transistor logic. However, instead of using only NMOS transistors, it also uses PMOS transistors as well. And you can see that on our figure on the right that it has PMOS transistors as well. Now. The introduction of these PMOS transistors causes some major changes and gives some big benefits uh, to the DPL structure of a CPL. Uh, namely, you can use much lower supply voltages and there's much lower noise and delay. However, again, we're back at the problem of higher input capacitances since we're using both PMOS and NMOS transistors. And another alternate style, which you know didn't warrant a style, uh, didn't warrant a slide for itself because it's not as widely used, is the swing, uh, swing restored. Oops. Sorry, swing restored uh, pass transistor logic. Uh, this is essentially a CPL that's slightly modified. It has a latch type uh, swing restoring circuit that has two cross coupled CMOS inverters that generally start a little bit of a higher performance than classic CPL. Um, you know, it's not used too widely, so it didn't want to slide for itself. We continue on uh, transmission logic. Uh, we'll talk about this briefly as well because it is an existing logic style. However, uh, in the modern adders, it's not really used. It's used in a lot of the earlier adders. Uh, it's based off of transmission function theory and gates, and the result is the transmission function adders and transmission gate adders, right? And because of its use of transmission theory, it has inherently low power consumption. Uh, you know, when you compare it at base to many of the other logic styles. However, you know the disadvantages are that you know. It does 
lack driving capability when it's compared to CMOS and CPL or DPL styles. And this is because the inputs are tied to the outputs, and so very low driving capability. And so, you know, while it may have inherently low power consumption when it's by itself, it has poor cascaded performance when you chain these adders together, which you often need to do to form some of these other parallel or serial multi bit adders uh, because of this low output driving capability. Um, so, we'll talk about this later in the MLT, some of the early implementations, but, uh, you know, eventually um, these don't show up as often. And we'll briefly talk about Domino as well. This is. Um, not very common, but it is an alternate logic style. The reason it's not used is because it's a dynamic technique, right? And of course, dynamic techniques, uh, you know, they have their benefits, right? Uh, however, you know, dynamic techniques, while they generally lead to higher speed in CMOS, you know, they're not suitable when you're trying to go for a lower power circuit because of the large clock loads and the high switching activities, right? And so even though you get rid of the static power dissipation, it's overall less power efficient. You know, you have more power dissipated, especially with the clock distribution network. Um, so, you know, there are some very early implementations using domino logic and uh, dynamic techniques. Um, however, you know, that's, you know, uh, it's, it's found to be you know, not as efficient, so it's not as common. And finally, we have what is uh, the hybrid logic styles. Uh, you know, so hybrid is generally a combination of you know different styles that we mentioned before. And the most common hybrid combination is taking one of the past transistor logic CPL or DPL and combining it with CMOS in order to try to get the benefits of both. So now that we know, you know, generally what all the different logic styles are like, we can actually go through and look at each of our papers and see how they performed. And we're going to be going in chronological order just because, you know, a lot of these papers are also comparing to each other. So by going in chronological order, we can see how certain outer structures compare to future developments. Right. So we're going to start all the way back in 1995, uh, this might be before any of you were born, uh, but this 1995 paper just does a bare bones CMOS, a CPL, DPL, and a domino comparison, with the domino being both dual rail and single rail. Right. Um, so this comparison wasn't done as a single full adder, but actually it was a composition of those full adders into a 32-bit carry look-ahead adder. And if you remember uh, what we talked about, you know, um, chaining together for transmission circuits is, ends up very poorly, which is why uh, transmission theory uh, based adders were not included in this study. Right? And if we just look overall at the general uh, statistics here and we look at the power, uh, we can see first of all, you know, both the dual rail domino and single rail domino have much higher power consumption uh, than their static counterparts. You know? Uh, almost t you know twice that uh, of the static counterparts. Um, and of course static here at the first column refers to static CMOS. But, um, in a much higher uh, power consumption, um, you know they, they do have a little bit of a lower delay, uh, but you know that that power consumption it really hurts them. There uh, doesn't warrant the the smaller delay they have, and in, in addition they have much lar larger area as well. So if you look at the tra total transistor width, um, is much larger than CPL and DPL, while uh, slightly larger than static. You know, and if we compare the the static CMOS to both of the CPL and DPL. Uh, Power-wise, static and CPL perform around the same, although CPL can have a, a little bit of a you know shorter delay. But again, for CPL, that real bonus is you know in the speed as, as well as uh, you know the, the transistor width. And as you can compare, the CPL transistor width is much smaller uh, than the static, so it'll be taking up a lot less area. Um, now, in, on the other hand, for DPL, you know DPL has a lot of the advantages over CPL in terms of power, speed, and delay. And we can see that reflected here as DPL has a decent, but here it's the most power efficient, right? And it has the lowest delay out of all the static components. But again, uh, you know, because its usage of PMOS as well is slightly larger uh, than the CPL uh, while, while being still in the static. So this was a, just a good comparison of these basic techniques uh, when the full adders are chained together into a larger system. Right. Um, so now what we're gonna look at here uh, is a it's a hybrid pass logic full adder, right? So this study did uh, only looked at a single one bit full adder, right? And this is the first introduction of hybrid pass logic, right? And if we look on the left here on our figure, this is the general structure of the adder we're using here. And as you can see, they do have three modules, right? Three blocks. The first block takes in the first two inputs. The second block takes the output as well as the carry in. And the third output takes in the carry, uh, sorry. The second output takes in the carry in as well as the output of the first module. And the third module takes the output of the first module as well. <clears throat> 
as outputting the carry out. So while the structure is the same, what happens inside the modules is completely different because they're using a hybrid logic inside of these, right? If you look at module one and module two, those that's not standard CMOS, right? Uh, we're using uh, pass logic, right? If you look at module one and module two, in module one, they're using XNOR and Zor, right? Instead of the classic half adder of just Zor and and. Right? Um, and now if you look at the right, we can see the, the power versus the supply voltage. Um, and <clears throat> uh, this hybrid, this hybrid uh, version, you know, performs admirably, uh, you know, in comparison to to all the other ones. Um, you know, it, it still performs, um, you know, a little a little bit worse than the the, the standard CMOS, um, but you know, in comparison to the TFA and TGA, which are you know briefly mentioned here, as we mentioned before, are based on transmission. You know, um, it does perform better than those as well as CL. Um, and then if we look at the power delay, power delay product, right? This is just the power of delay. Uh, it's just a way of measuring both the power and delay in aggregate, uh, as well. It has um, you know very good performances as your voltage goes up. Um, you know, not, not great at these lower voltages, but you know overall it does have a higher output drive than your classic CPL. Uh, you know, in part thanks to using a static CMOS, and it does have a much reduced area uh, compared to the traditional flatter. You can just see just looking at model one and two, only six transistors used. You know, um, so it's much smaller and has a smaller reduced area uh, compared to the classic static CMOS. So it starts to get the best of both worlds, and really this starts the ball rolling in terms of you know hybrid styles, right? So now this hybrid CMOS, hybrid CMOS logic style is you know a modification of that paper, right? If we look at our table here, um, <clears throat> we can look at the simulation results. They simulated at a 50 megahertz frequency and they did it at a single uh, supply of voltage. Then we have the static CMOS, of course, with 20 transistors. Uh, the CPL that they compared has slightly more transistors. They do have the TGA and TFA, of course, you know, uh, they do have better power than CMOS and CPL because as we mentioned, uh, when you're looking at just a single adder, they do have uh, pretty good uh, power consumption. Um, and then we have this HP SC, which is the previous one we're comparing to. Uh, so the previous one we just looked at from 2003 uh, is referred to as HP SC, you know, these future ones. And a new HP SC was basically a, a uh, small, uh, basically, uh, improvement of the previous one, uh, which is not included in this presentation. Uh, but then we can see the proposed one, right? So the proposed one actually works very similar uh, to the last one as well. It uses the same logic structure as module 1, module 2, module 3. Uh, with that hybrid structure, it just adds a couple transistors compared to the HPSC, right? And mostly I'm going to be comparing it to the HPSC. We see it has two more transistors, but uh, you know, 7 nanowatts less power, right? Almost half the delay, right? Which leads to almost half the uh, power delay product. And in terms of area, it's an improvement as well. Um, so yeah, this as, as hybrid CMOS logic styles were uh, researched more, we can see that they're starting to outperform standard CMOS and CPL counterparts. And then in 2008, right, what was introduced was CPL, right, with a brand new logic structure. Um, rather than using the classic uh, module one, module two, module three uh, logic structure, uh, this was a CPL that used level restoration, as you can see in the logic diagram, um, in order uh, for its logic structure. Right? And this this change of logic structure uh, really paved the way to, for CPLs and TPLs to start dominating. Right, as you can see, um, the top simulation results um, is the power. The, the table two is the delay. <clears throat> Compared to the hybrid that we looked at from 2006, right, uh, the CPL does perform uh, relatively better. Uh, compared to a static CMOS, uh, you know, it does have higher power consumption. Um, but if you look at the delay, however, um, it's much faster in, in terms of the delay in comparison to both hybrid and CMOS. And that's thanks in part to its logic structure, right? And <clears throat> using this logic structure in a classic CPL in the classic logic structure has a higher output drive and it has reduced transistors for larger applications. You know, on itself in this full, single full adder, right, which is a test they did, it does have more transistors than a, a CMOS or a hybrid. However, uh, based on how it's designed, when you're chaining these adders together, it actually has reduced transistors for these larger applications and increased speed over classic CMOS. Right? And so that really paved the way for this 2011 paper that has some of the best statistics when it comes to um, speed. Right? So first we're going to look at the logic and structure. They have two new uh, proposed full adders right? that both use a brand new logic structure. Um, and the first one uses a DPL logic structure. 
Uh, second one, uh, as we mentioned before, uh, briefly, is a swing restored CPL logic style. So essentially, we have a DPL and a CPL style. Um, so if we look at the structure, right? So what they did here was they got rid of the necessity for the sum out and the carry out to rely on that single output product. Instead, they have a Zor and XNOR feed directly into the multiplexer and and or feed directly into the other multiplexer, and one of them takes the input from the other, which goes to carry in, goes into both multiplexers, right? And so this is a brand new logic structure that they implemented for both this uh, DPL and CPL logic styles. And if you look at their performance, um, their performance just blows all the our previous ones out of the water. Right? If you look at HPSC, that's the 2003 one that we looked at. The hybrid CMOS is the 2006, and the new CPL is the 2008 we look at. Right? Uh, top refers to the entire test benches, uh, you know, statistics, and FA re refers to just this full adder. Uh, but if we just look at uh, across, right, in terms of both power, um, power and delay, you know, area, it's just huge improvements, right? Uh, compared to the HPSC, you know, all these are a comparison to the worst case, but 80% you know, power savings and 25% speed improvement, which leads to an 85% uh, power delay product optimization, right? And even comparing just to the CPO, which is the newest one, um, there's a de there's a decent reduction in the power, especially uh, just for the the full adder, right? Almost a hundred less uh, watts, right? Uh, the 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 layout of the table is a little weird, but the the um, the units are at the top. It's it's a hundred less um, in microwatts, right? Um, so that's a, that's a huge increase, right? And and much reduced delay as well. So this new logic structure for the DPL and CRCPL works so much better. And as well, the area, the important thing is the area was optimized as well. When generally, you know, this is a struggle uh, as you as you use DPL as it, as it gets more complex. Generally, the area gets worse in the CMOS set sometimes. But the area is optimized here. And importantly, the minimum power supply voltage was reduced to 0.6, which is nothing new. This is something the CPL introduced as well. But comparison to our different hybrid and the HPSCs, it's a huge reduction of the minimum power supply voltage. All right, and then this is the most recent one that we have here. Uh, it's just a comparison now of CMOS. Uh, CPL and DPL. However, it's a comparison of them into a larger structure. So here we see a comparison of them into 16-bit uh, CMOS, CPL, and DPL adders. Um, right? And this is, instead of just looking at one single use case as we did before, we're looking at a different adder scheme. So we have a ripple carry adder, carry look ahead, carry save, you know, all these different adders that are 16 bits. And we can do a comparison of CMOS, CPL, and DPL. As we mentioned before, you know, a head-to-head -head comparison of CMOS and CPL, we see sometimes the transistor count is even. Uh, sometimes CMOS has more and sometimes CPL has less. And again, this is based on the fact on how this newer CPL, um, you know, based on how you're chaining the adders, it can lead to less transistors. But it also relies on the structure of uh, whatever combination of adder you're creating. Right. And DPL in general, of course, um, I think as we're slowly realizing, DPL is just much better than CPL and CMOS in terms of transistor. And even if we look at the power, uh, right, it's, it's much more power efficient. And um, generally, the delay is much better as well. Um, you know, delay is, is much higher for, for the, the CPL based uh, adders. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, after we look at all of these, right, we can have the conclusions, right? Um, so at the beginning, right, we had a a lot of just a comparison of bare bones adders, you know, using the classic logic structure. However, we had an introduction of hybrid based adders, hybrid based adders, right, that try to take the best of CPL and DPL and speed and area while getting the CMOS drive and power. Right? And for a while, right, and for most of like from 2000 to like 2008 ish, right, these hybrid based adders uh, had the best performance. However, you know, with adjusting the logic structure, the classic logic structure, this turned out to be the key in order for CPL and DPL to perform better, right? And it led to higher speed and less area, right? As well as improvements on the weak points normally of the output drive, as well as power efficiency. And it's starting, these are starting to outperform hybrid-based adders and currently are still uh, the best, uh, you know, performing uh, single full adders. And so, yeah, this is my, uh, you know, project. It's just showing you guys a little bit of interesting information on power, uh, energy efficient circuits uh, for full adders and uh, generally what the techniques have been uh, behind finding the most energy efficient circuits. Uh, so thank you for listening.